In this video, we're going to be talking about the newest book in the Fazbear Fright fa uh, universe, I guess? This new book is called Gumdrop Angel, and it's a weird one. And that's saying something considering what the past stories have been like. You can check those out on my channel as well. But this one is really interesting, uh, and we're going to be going over the first story today, which is apparently... I haven't read the other ones yet, but apparently this is the least interesting out of the three, and I still thought it was really odd, so let's get going. But first... Only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. So this story follows a girl named Angel, and she's at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza when the story begins. She's there with her family, which is her sister, or stepsister Ophelia, her stepfather Myron, and her mother Bianca. Now Angel's real father died when she was young, and so her mother remarried a pretty wealthy man, which is weird because basically every character in this series is not very well off money-wise. So this is different, I guess, in that way. And this story does a lot of similar things to other stories, actually. Uh, for instance, in In the Flesh, where we have our main character, Matt. This kind of reminds me of that, uh, those really grumpy characters that we've seen before. Uh, only with Angel, it's done a lot better because you can understand where she's coming from. With those other characters, they were just awful for some reason. But with Angel, it's different because you can kind of actually understand uh, where this is coming from for her. Her family is pretty awful to her, even though we're hearing the story from her perspective, maybe that's being warped a bit, it still definitely seems like they're being pretty bad to her. Her sister is fine, like her stepsister Ophelia is a perfectly good kid it seems, uh, but Angel just kind of hates her because her stepfather really only cares about his daughter. And so Ophelia spills uh, pizza sauce on Angel at Ophelia's uh, birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. We haven't had a story in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza for a while, so it's nice to see that again, even if the main animatronics don't really come into play all that much. But yeah, Ophelia spills uh, pizza sauce on Angel, and Angel is just really upset after that, and so she just basically runs off uh, where she meets Dominic. Dominic is one of the managers here, the assistant managers, and so he helps her get cleaned up, and it's clear that they're both attracted to each other, but nothing really comes from that so far. Uh, he helps to clean her up, uh, and she, I guess, vents about her life to him, which is great. And then she goes back to the party after all that. They, they have a nice talk, nothing that really affects the story very much. She kind of... it's more of a way for the authors to really cement just how much she hates everything. She talks to him about her family, about her life, and then she leaves, basically, after she's been all cleaned up, and they talk about talking later, which they will. Now, this is a really interesting part. This is where the party is beginning to come to an end, and Ophelia is getting her big surprise. Now, there is a birthday gummy that is being lowered. It's basically what you see on the cover here. It's this gummy statue creature just made of candy and sugar, and it's moving, it's jerking around, it's flailing its limbs, it's moving uh, almost like it's alive, wouldn't that be crazy? And all the kids just start to devour this thing, but the gumdrop nose is the one that's saved specifically for the birthday girl, Ophelia. Only she can eat the gumdrop nose. And so the announcer says several times that that is only for her. <laughs> so keep that in mind. But yeah, it's basically everyone's worst nightmare during a pandemic. You have all these kids basically in a pile eating from this same huge gummy statue. Very unhygienic, really. And then they leave. They, they leave the party. Angel is still pouting. Uh, and then it's revealed there is another surprise waiting for Ophelia. See, she really loves horses. Uh, that's kind of... It's just something about her character, I guess. She loves horses. And so they, uh, they take a quick stop before they head back home. So Myron, Angel's stepfather, has actually bought Ophelia riding lessons on horses, and they spend a fair bit of time with Angel meeting uh, one of the actual owners of these horses and this whole stable thing, where this other girl kind of explains just how expensive this is, which really does not help Angel's mood on the whole situation. But again, like, it's not like she's just being sour for no reason. It makes sense why she's upset over this, because while Ophelia gets all of this, uh, you know, thousands of dollars for her birthday, 
Angel just went to some restaurant, and it was a vegan restaurant because Ophelia uh, chose which one they were going to, so it wasn't really Angel's choice in the first place. Later at home, Angel is still fuming, but she decides to call Dominic because she's just, I mean, she needs someone to talk to, and so she does. Uh, but Myron finds out she's calling whoever this guy is. He doesn't know. He never met Dominic. And so he's very upset that she's uh, calling this random dude. And so uh, there's this big argument. Angel kind of calls them out for just being really awful to her and yet treating Ophelia like a princess. And she gets really upset. And so she runs off. She goes to Ophelia's room, which is also pointed out to be much nicer than Angel's room and larger. Uh, and she goes and apparently Ophelia had taken the gumdrop nose, which was supposed to be saved for her, and she hasn't eaten it yet. She decided to save it for later. So she's just got this in a crystal bowl in her room where she keeps all of her little treasures, uh, and that's just where this gumdrop nose is hiding. And so Angel takes it, and she eats it in front of Ophelia, which again, Ophelia isn't a bad kid. It's more the parents who are just being awful. Uh, and so it, I, you can't really... It doesn't make sense that she would that Angel would do this because Ophelia hasn't done anything wrong, but she does. She eats this gumdrop nose in front of uh, Ophelia, and obviously she's going to be distraught over this. And her parents are very upset, and so Angel goes. She hides in her room. She locks the door. Uh, as they are trying to get in, they're trying to break in, and I guess I don't know. Angel mentions that they've never really been abusive to her but she still obviously doesn't want to let them in the room, and so she locks the door, she puts on uh, some music, and she just goes to sleep. She wakes up a little bit later at 11 p.m., and she is itchy. She's feeling itchy along her jaw, her neck, uh, and her chest, and so she's wondering why. She goes and she looks in the mirror, and she sees that she's also uh, got a bit of a red rash, and it's white in some places, uh, and it feels squishy. Which, I mean, the foreshadowing here is incredible. I don't know how you can't know what's about to happen. And so she decides to take a shower and try and, I guess, get rid of the rash, I, something like that. And so she does, but when she comes out of the shower, she finds it's just all worse. She's starting to actually look scaly. And she thinks this might be because of what Dominic sprayed on her. It was water, she thought, but it might have been toxic, and so she decides she needs to call him, she needs to find out what's going on here. The rash is spreading, and so she tries to call Dominic and not wake her family up, and he tells her that he has no idea what's going on, until she mentions that she ate the gumdrop nose, and then he tells her to go to Freddy's immediately. So it looks like he knows what's going on here, which would make sense since he works at the place. So she tries to drive there and look very inconspicuous. She wraps like a scarf around her so that no one can see. And she does this and she makes it to Freddy's with uh, one or two close calls. Dominic is there to meet her. They go inside. She's starting to feel dizzy. Her vision is cloudy. Uh, she feels like she's got cotton in her ears. And he leads her to the back room. He's telling her he's going to help her, that she's going to be okay. Uh, and he leads her to a box. He tells her to go inside and she doesn't really ask why. She just accepts it because she it wants to feel safe, I guess. Eventually, she falls asleep, and she wakes up later in this box. She can't move at all, and it's hard to tell whether that's because of the box or because of what's happening to her. But she hears uh, a little bit of commotion. It's muted, and she's lowered down from this box, and, well, she's back in Freddy's, obviously, and she's in the big party room, and there's kids all around. She tries to flail around and escape, and she realizes she's been turned into candy for some reason, and these kids try and eat her, and uh, that's the end of the story. So, I mean, there's that. Now, I don't know what this story means. Probably nothing. Uh, it's, again, a bit of a body-snatching idea, and it seems something like that, even though it doesn't look like anyone's replaced her that we know of. Uh, Dominic was definitely... He, it wasn't like he was happy about what he was doing. It seems like this is all kind of his fault, but he definitely showed remorse for it. Uh, she says, Angel mentions that it sounded like he was crying as he lowered her into the box. So, while it seems like he's responsible for this, it doesn't look like it, it's what he wants to be doing. And, uh, the story just kind of ends there, which, I mean, is a good place to end it off on. This story definitely reminds me of some past ones, but I think it's done a lot better because you actually don't hate the main character for once. And, uh, it's done well. I mean, even though you can kind of tell what's going to happen in the end of the story way before it ever happens, 
it's still done well, and it, just to see it actually happen in the end, kind of, it's, it, it does, it is fulfilling in a way, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. It's hard to really put it into words, but it's not like it drags on. It's not like it kind of continues and continues and you know what's going to happen, so it's not worth it. It's, it is still definitely worth it because while you're spending the time uh, with these characters, you kind of, you spend a little bit more time in the world and you kind of understand what's going on until the end does come. All in all, the story is good, uh, and apparently the next ones in this book are even better, so we'll get to those soon. I'm going to start reading them, and, uh, well, I guess I'll talk about those as well. And, of course, this Ditch Wraith epilogue, too. So, I'll see you guys then, and that's about it for now. Bye bye <laughs>